Good morning, Illini, and welcome back to another Healthy Illini podcast. I'm your host, Matt Schrock, as always, and we made it. Congratulations. Another semester done. The spring semester has come to a close, and uh, spring has come and gone and come and gone and come and gone again, sometimes in just a few days. Seems we like we went from winter to summer, but we're here, and I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad we get a chance to chat with you again. Uh, one quick program update. Uh, going into the summer, Healthy Illini will be dropping not every week, but about every other. Uh, that gives our editors, who are students, a little bit of a break as they're going into it. And some of the the, uh, the planning with a lot of summer activities for a lot of staff on campus just makes it a little difficult. So we will pick back up with weekly in the fall, but uh, it will be a little bit uh, less in the summer. But if you haven't heard our episodes, go back and check them out. I think, I think this is the 39th episode, maybe somewhere around there. And uh, so go back and check those out. If you have not heard them, we'd love for you to listen to them and give us some feedback. But today, uh, we have a bit of a different podcast than we've had before. We talk a lot about wellness here at Healthy Illini and wellness and healthy living that touches a lot of areas. A lot of times we go immediately to physical activity or mental health, um, but it really impacts just about everything we do. And so today we're talking about our environment and how that impacts our health and wellness. And so joining with me today are two guests from the IC here on campus, that's I-S-E-E, which stands for Institute for Sustainability, Energy, and Environment. And so I want to welcome uh, Meredith Moore. She is the Sustainability Programs Manager and has a Master's of Science in Geoscience. Meredith, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. She's also joined by a student, uh, Jenna Schaefer. Uh, She is a Campus Sustainability and Illini and Illini Lights Out intern, excuse me. Uh, She's a sophomore studying environmental economics and policy. And Jenna, thanks for being here. So um, you're both here and you're both a part of, of IC, and there are probably a number of listeners uh, who really have no background on what IC is or what it means. So let's start there. Uh, if you can just give me a quick rundown of, of what IC is and why it's important on campus. Yeah, so IC was founded in December 2013 as it exists today. And we essentially take a three-pronged approach to sustainability and climate solutions. We oversee education and outreach, research, and campus sustainability. Jenna and I here today are under the campus sustainability realm. So what that looks like is essentially our ICAP, Climate Action Plan, and uh, campus sustainability program. So anything that you see on campus to do with environmental consciousness, that really falls under the campus sustainability umbrella at IC. And and if you could just, uh, you said ICAP, Um, what is ICAP? ICAP is the Illinois Climate Action Plan. It's essentially our campus strategic plan to achieve carbon neutrality as soon as possible, though no later than 2050. But it goes one step beyond that. It also is our plan for increasing the culture of sustainability, increasing sustainability engagement on campus, making it more visible, more accessible for everybody. So speaking of of visible, just an example of where a student might have seen something that relates to you guys but didn't know it? Because you, you see a lot of stuff. You see signs, you see chalk, chalk, uh, sidewalk chalk signs, you see stuff in buildings. Where might they have seen something that pertains to, to uh, IC and ICAP? Well, the ICAP um, really covers a lot of facets of sustainability. So there's a lot of programs that have come out of the Illinois Climate Action Plan. But um, One place where you might have physically seen the ICAP is when IC does tabling events. For example, um, we had Green Quad Day a couple of weeks ago on Earth Day, and IC was tabling. um, And maybe you walked by and talked to some representatives from IC and saw the physical ICAP. Yeah. When you see recycling bins, trash bins, things like that, we have our hand in waste. We work very closely with the facilities and services as well. So while FNS handles more of the infrastructure, we help and work together on helping engage the community and our campus on how to recycle properly, how to use those bins appropriately, where to even place the bins so they are in the, the most efficient place to make it as easy as possible to do the right thing. Lights is another example. When lights are off in a classroom or a building when it's not in use, that's an example of living sustainably. It's not using energy unnecessarily. Those are just a couple examples. Well, and I, I love those examples because for a couple of reasons. One, the tabling on campus, you see tabling all the time for, for people. And I see tabling when I walk by, I think, oh, that's a group. And don't really think about the group behind the group. 
you know, or the, the, the sponsoring group and things like that. That's kind of where IC falls in, especially like uh, the recycling bins. Where they go, you don't, I mean, you, there's so many things we, we do that we do every day. You flip a light on, somebody had a, a, a part of that. Uh, you know, where you parked, somebody had a part of painting the lines or figuring out how the best flow is of traffic. Same thing with recycling bins. You know, where's the best place to put it? Where's the best option? And so that's a lot of what this is. And, and it's intentional. It's intentional in the way you approach it, in the way it's intentional the way IC approaches things. And that's really um, kind of the underlying thing I want to talk about today as we go through stuff is how can we be intentional? How can we be intentional in being active with our environment? And how can we be intentional in letting our, and how our environment impacts us? Which brings me to the next thing. Uh, I don't think anybody, if, if I brought anybody here, in here and said, hey, we need to be conscientious, we need to be proactive in the environment, um, no one would argue with that. I, I, everybody says, yeah, we need, you know, we need to be aware of what's going on with the environment. But a major part of what we do here at Healthy Illini is coming alongside people in their own personal journey, where they're at and where they're going, because everybody's journey is individual. There's commonalities that we all have, but everybody has a uniqueness to their journey. And we want to come alongside of that. So if we're talking about a person's individual personal health and wellness, how does the environment play a part in that? How does uh, sustainability impact that? Because we often think of them, you know, impacting the world, but how does that impact us and, and especially students? Yeah, so just think about when you're walking to class and uh, there's like a pathway without litter, there's the beautiful trees, there's flowers in bloom, that just puts you in a good mood. And things like that happen when people take care of the environment, when people aren't just throwing their trash um, on the side of the road, like, and not in a trash can. So it, just having a, an environment that obviously people care about can just put you in a good mindset. Yeah, I love that you mentioned that, Jenna. When people feel more connected to their community, when they feel that they can walk outside and, like I said, go for a walk and enjoy fresh air, when you go outside and are feeling stressed, having that time to stop and smell the flowers, walk around, and you really feel connected to where you're living, where you're existing, I think that only helps your mental health. So whenever anybody says, where do I start with sustainability? Or how can I find my interest or where to start taking action? Typically what I say is just walk outside and something that sparks or that ignites while you're on that walk, that's likely what leads to your passion. Is it the trees? Is it having shade when you're on the quad? Is it that you're sitting in really clean grass and there's no trash around you? That it's fresh air? It's not smelly? You're not overrun with chemicals? Anything like that? Um, it's really a good way to develop an appreciation. And from that appreciation, it leads to action. And that, that action is, again, individual. Because for me personally, I live in a small town. I, I, I commute about 45 minutes to work every day um, because I like the fact that I can walk in my backyard and see stars. It's a very small town. There's not a lot of light pollution. And that's not, it's, for some people, that's like, oh, that, I can't do that. I have to have that light. I have to be in the, you know a bigger city. And that's totally fine. It's, it's understanding where you're coming from and then understanding how you impact that area. Um, because this idea of your community and, and environment, it's interconnected with everybody. Everybody has a part to play, um, and, and that's really an important thing. Um, and, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the, the physical health of walking inside, nice, you know, air to breathe, uh, mental health about, you know, it just puts you in a better mood when you're in somewhere that you're comfortable and you feel connected to. Um, but you also both talked a little bit about community resilience um, in, in your prep work. Uh, would you share a little bit about what, what what is community resilience and how does that tie into what we're talking about today? Yeah, so... The word resilient or resilience has a few different meanings or connotations. It essentially is being on a big picture, being strong, being comfortable. You're able to bounce back amongst difficult situations. How we use it in the sustainability field here on campus is in 2016, we signed a resilience commitment the university did alongside our local mayors of Champaign, Urbana, and Savoy. Now that commitment, the resilience commitment, basically outlined that we are going to work together to tackle environmental challenges. We are going to be more resilient. We're going to be stronger as a community together by trying to develop solutions to achieve a, an adaptable climate and a strong environment. Uh, so to be resilient, it means to, again, be prepared for 
uncertainty. And that's what we're here to do is to, as we don't necessarily know what the future holds, we're here to help people feel comfortable, strong, and to be adaptable in an uncertain environment. Which leads me directly to the next thing I want to ask you about, because we, you know, talking about resiliency, talking about taking care of your environment. These are all great ideas and, and not actually great ideas. These are, these are important and vital ideas. But without the action side of it, they just kind of stay as ideas. So if a student's listening, they're hearing this, they're like, you know, I want to get involved. I, I'm passionate about this. I don't know where to get involved. Or, you know what, I need to get more involved because I never really thought about it. What are resources on campus? Um, let's start Let's start there. Resources on campus that students can get involved in, whether it be a group or a project or whatever. Um, what is available through IC and through UIUC? Yeah, there are a ton of sustainability resources uh, through the university and through IC. There's also a lot of sustainability programming. So, for example, one program that I've been working on this year is Illini Lights Out. And so it's a volunteer program. It's like one or two Fridays every month. And volunteers come and are assigned a building where they walk through um, and shut off lights that otherwise would have been left on all weekend. And it saves a lot of energy. And volunteers have a lot of fun. And they get a snack at the end, too. So that's always a good thing. But um, yeah, so that's just one example. There's also a ton of sustainability related RSOs on campus, um, such as Students for Environmental Concerns or the Student Sustainability Committee or um, Project for Less, Grow to Give, Illini Urban Farmers, and there's a ton more. Um, so yeah, those are definitely all good things to check out on Quad Day. I know it can be overwhelming, but um, I think usually they're all kind of grouped together. At IC, what we see our role as is helping connect students, faculty, staff, anybody that visits our campus to the resource, to the group, the course, the research project, whatever it is that they're looking for, we hope to connect them and provide those opportunities for them. So if you don't know where to get started, like Jenna said, there's all these different opportunities, but feel free to reach out to us at IC. Uh, we're happy to connect you and even talk to you more about pick your brain about what you might be interested in and help find a resource for you, even if you're not exactly sure. And as always, we will have links to these resources in the episode description. Um, we do that with every topic. The same will be here. If you're curious about any of these, don't know where to reach out, go to the episode description. We'll have links there that you can uh, talk to somebody. If nothing else, reach out to us at Healthy Alana. We'll be happy to put you in contact with uh, people that can help you find what you're looking for exactly. Because like, like they said, there's a lot of opportunities and uh, you can find something that, that, is really uh, your particular interest for sure. So we talked about the resources on campus, but let's let's drill down even a little bit deeper, just real, real quick. I know we don't have a ton of time, um, but <clears throat> if, a, if a student is listening and uh, wants to know, okay, at home, in my dorm, in my apartment, you know, is there something I can be doing right now that's easy? I don't have time necessarily because my class and work schedule to go be a part of groups or that's not really not my thing, but in my own space, what can I do? Uh, do you have any uh, particular examples of, of ideas that can help, you know, make their environment more sustainable? Yeah, that is a great question. Action is incredibly important. We can all talk about what we want to do, but unless we take action, that's how we can actually make a positive impact on our campus and in our lives. So um, the first thing is turn off lights when you're not in a room. If you don't need extra lights on, turn them off. Same thing with water. Try to be conscious of how much water you're using. We've heard turn off the water when you're brushing your teeth. Those are very easy examples of how to live a more environmentally conscious lifestyle. But it, it can go one step further than that. We can be more conscientious of the resources that we use, such as when we're eating meat. That takes a lot of water to raise animals and then go through the processing process to then make them edible for consumption. So being conscientious of eating local produce, eating and investing our money and our purchasing power in local entities and high quality goods that aren't necessarily going to end up in the trash immediately afterward. So try to cut back on online purchases. That uses a lot of transportation, energy, emissions just to get a product from one place in the country or the world to our doorstep. And it's something we don't often think about, but makes a very large impact in, in the local and global scale. So our clothing, our food, the paper that we use, all of that is is something that we should be conscientious of. Recycling is really important, but it should be one of the last resorts. We should be aware and mindful of the, the goods that we use even before resorting to recycling. What that looks like is maybe not purchasing a 
plastic water bottle or pop bottle or iced tea or whatever it might be when you have that in your dorm, in your apartment and whatever. Or if you have a bottle that you can just refill, that's a better option than purchasing a disposable one. If you're at a store or a restaurant, say, I don't need a straw. I don't need the plastic bag. People are very receptive when you say that. It's still in our culture to automatically hand out those disposable items, but you have a lot of power in obtaining those and then what you do with them after the fact. Yeah, and uh, Meredith mentioned that um, eating meat has a huge environmental impact. So if you're living in the university dorms, um, if you go to the LAR dining hall, uh, from what I understand, I mean, it wasn't open last year due to COVID when I was living in university housing, but that is all vegetarian food. So that is a great place to go um, if you want to make your diet a little more sustainable. And also, you may have noticed around campus, um, there are some um, like trash and recycling combo bins um, because sometimes it's kind of confusing to tell where where does this need to go? Is this recyclable or not? And so these new shadow boxes hopefully do make it a little more easy to understand where you should dispose of it. But like Merida said, recycling should kind of be your last resort. But another exciting thing that we have on campus is we are working to expand composting. So we do have um, one compost tumbler outside of the National Soybean Research Center. Um, and we are looking to, or we are working on expanding to getting them at more locations. So hopefully by the fall, you'll see a couple more around campus. Absolutely. Yeah, we're really excited about the compost tumblers. Uh, but I'm really glad, Matt, that you said mindfulness in the beginning of this podcast, because I think a lot of what we're talking about really comes down to just being mindful. Jenna was talking about eating and food and all of that. And food waste is one of the, a big problem something that we're trying to tackle on campus and in the community both. So being more mindful about the foods that you eat, how much you're taking. If you're at a restaurant, even requesting that it comes, it you don't come with fries or something if you know you're not going to eat them. Um, just asking. And if you don't know, come to us. We'll, we'll help lead you in the right direction. On campus, pertaining to recycling, a lot of people don't know that we what the items we recycle are because it's different in other communities. So on campus, we recycle aluminum cans. We recycle plastic one and two. And what that means is on the, bo on the bottom of products, you'll typically see a recycling symbol, the three arrows and a triangle, and there's a number in there. Beverage containers are typically plastics one and two. And so that's what we say we recycle on campus, plastics one and twos or beverage containers. Um, we recycle paper, we recycle cardboard, also, masks can be recycled in special outlets. So the union, for example, has mask recycling. A few other places on campus have mask recycling. Plastic bag recycling is also available in a separate outlet at the union. Um, so just being mindful of the products that you use and making sure that there's not a special recycling outlet for them so that we can avoid those items in a landfill. And with everything, uh, any change to any life, whether it be a, a exercise change, a dietary change, a habit change with, with the mindfulness here, it takes intentionality. Um, very few things do we do that we just naturally do. Um, now there's a lot of things that we do that we don't do without thinking right now. Like if I tie my shoes right now, I could tie my shoe while talking to you and I'm not focusing on my shoe at all. However, 40 years, I do the math, 40 years ago, um, that would be an intentional thing that you stop and you think and you go, and it's just like this, the idea of recycling bags. Um, instead of throwing it in the trash. Um, it takes that moment of, oh, wait, no, don't want to throw it in the trash. I want to set it aside so I can recycle it later. Give it a few weeks, and you're just automatically doing it. Um, and that's a key thing with this and this uh, with this uh, idea of being uh, being more conscientious. And so if, if, you're, if you're in that point, you're like, man, I'm trying to do this, but it's hard, reach out because people at IC, the, ca the campus groups, want to support you. Community is a huge thing no matter what you're doing. You know, you hear it with exercise all the time. You find yourself a group that exercises, they can help uh, hold each other. The same thing with this. If you're trying to, if you're listening, you're like, I want to do better, find somebody that will support you. And there are lots of people on this campus that want to support you. That's why we're here. We want to walk alongside you and help you be the best you that you can possibly be and to impact the world the best that you can possibly do it so that we all can uh, have, have uh, great experiences no matter where we go. So um, reach out to them, find out uh, how they can help. Uh, if they have any questions, go on that. And if, 
if you have questions we haven't covered, uh, let us know, and we're happy to pass them on or reach out to IC, and uh, and uh, they'll be happy to to talk to you about those things. But I thank you for being here today. We're out of time, unfortunately. Um, but uh, I really appreciate you coming in. It's been great talking to you guys. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. Health and wellness really tie into so many things in our lives and our environment and, and where we're at affects us and how we take care of that environment, how we interact with that environment affects us and affects others as well. And so uh, IC is here to help with sustainability, with uh, having a beautiful campus, having a sustained campus um, that is not only affecting Urbana-Champaign, but is setting a standard to for others to look to to affect our world. So if you have questions on that, if you're uncertain about anything we've talked about or you want to follow up or, or you just want to talk to us about it, contact us at Healthy Illini, contact the people at IC. They'll be happy to talk to you. But thank you for joining us today. You are on a personal journey no matter where you are in it. You are important and you matter. Your health and wellness are important and matter, and we are here to keep you well to excel. So go have a great week, Illini. Let us know how you're doing, and we'll catch you next time on Healthy Illini.